Hello, and uh, welcome to another Sam Elger C++ tutorial. This time I was thinking of making an arena team calculator uh, for, it was actually just for myself, something real quick. Uh, well, that's the benefits of being a programmer, I guess, huh? Uh, ladies and gentlemen. But um, I was going to put it up on YouTube as a tutorial on certain things, and I realized I haven't done a tutorial yet on class design on what good class design is and things like that so I'm gonna take my arena team class and I'm going to convert that into a tutorial uh, before I make my other tutorial on making the actual driver program for the classes here I, I, there's actually a couple classes in that program but I'm just gonna use one I'm gonna use the not the smallest one I'm gonna use the medium size one here it's because class design in C++ is all about protecting data. It's all about having access to the data exclusively. It's about reusing your code as an object and things like that. So technically, this class that I'm giving you now, you could write it up in a little C++ and a little header file, and you could store it away in your library of functions there that you've created. Even if you may never use it again, you know, there may come a day where you could pull it out, dust the dust off the disk or whatever you've uh, stowed it away on, and uh, use it for your own gain, uh, for your own program, because C++, and as the world goes around and as computers get more advanced, programs are getting larger, they're getting more complex, things like that, and um, some of the most advanced games out there would take 20 years for a single person to create. Um, it takes anywhere between two to five years for a whole company spending billions of dollars with hundreds of people artists programmers musicians and whatnot to create these games so to take a single person with none of that with none of that money with none of those resources it would take them at least 20 years to do I mean because you got other things to do you know you got to work I mean you're not at work you got to work you gotta make that money and things like that so you're not gonna have as much time to do it it can easily take uh, a single person with the skills 20 years to create a game like World of Warcraft which which I play and which is what the arena team calculator is actually for I don't like having to go to the Blizzard website every week to punch in my numbers just to see what I'm gonna get Whereas now, once I've created this program, I'm going to be able to double-click it on my desktop, punch in my rating, and uh, get all the information I want on a, nicely quick, on a nice quick table. So let's get started. Um, I'm going to just do the class, so we're going to ignore all this. It's not going to compile. Um, I'm not even going to put it into a separate C++ file. I'm just going to type it out here, teach you class design, and I'll go over this class again later on the other tutorial. Uh, the first thing we do is create the class. We're going to call it Arena Team. Alright, now we're going to make our public functions, our public uh, data, things like that. Now we need to be able to set the Arena Team. Now, when you're setting something, we're not going to get a value back. Alright, set team rating. Okay, uh, now we need to pass the integer to it and I'm going to use unsigned numbers because there should be never anything less than zero so uh, let's go ahead and do that now if you've paid attention to other tutorials you don't actually need to put for prototypes you don't have to actually put a value like a variable name there just what should be expected is enough now because we're going to be working with unsigned ints when we try to get that team rating it's going to return that like that. Now when you're getting something, there should be no reason for it to be able to um, change values or anything like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it a const function, which means although it has access to the data, it does not have access to change any of it. I use that with the keyword const right after the function like this. Um, this is a very important class decision. Like if, if you're making classes for yourself and you, you're might use it once and so on and so forth and you've programmed it hard right into your right into your little program there and things like that 
and you're not going to make this mistake. You could probably go ahead and admit that, but it's poor class design. You should just go put it in whether you like it or not. I mean, let's be realistic here. This is programming. There's no real shortcuts. Um, I look around at all those people out there who are doing Blitz Basic and stuff like that, and while they're great programs, you are limited by that language, right? That language was probably created in this one to, to be realistic about things. And um, I envy those people who are learning that first uh, to get familiar with it because they plan on coming to C++. Um, that, that, that makes it, That's a good idea. I, I learned on BASIC, uh, Visual BASIC. I did Pascal. I did all those languages. And uh, I know I'm rambling, but it's for a good point here. Um, and the people who went to Bliss Basic, who have no intention of moving on, they're never going to make anything of utmost quality because they're limited by it. It's not possible. So when you're going to learn something, you want to learn it right, and you want to learn it right at the beginning. So put that in there and get used to doing it. When you're not going to be returning functions, put it. You're going to thank yourself later. Save a lot of bugs on your big programs. Anyway, let's move on. Uh, the team size there's a threes, twos, and five size for those of you who don't play. So we need to be able to set the size of the team. Uh, when you're setting the size, like I said, of uh, anything, uh, we're not returning a value, so we put the void. Now we want to set the team size. Alright. Unsigned integer. Now we're going to put the value here because we want to make a default value. Alright, so we're going to set variable equals to 5. We're going to default it to a size 5 team. Uh, just like that. Um, for those of you, you should know this already, how to create variables and functions that have default values. I've covered it, I think, twice in previous tutorials. One very in depth, so I'm not going to go over that anymore here, but uh, that's what we're doing there. Now we want to get the team size. Now, as before, when you're getting the team size, you're getting a value, you're not setting anything, you should have no reason to. So we're going to lock that just like that. Now, for those of you who don't play, there is a penalty on the amount of game point to get at the end of the week. Um, how, how it works is, and I'm only explaining this so you can see the logic behind my game design here, or my class design. The, the logic is, if you're on a fives team, there's no penalty. You get 100% of the points earned. So if your team had a 2,000 rating, and let's say it's one for one, okay? Um, we'll make it even simpler. We're going to go, say you have a 1,000 team rating, okay? And you have a fives team, there's no penalty. So at the end of the week, you're going to get 1,000 points. Now, on a threes team, the penalty is roughly 83%. So what that means is you're going to get 83% of the points that a fives team would get. So if we had that same thousand rating, you'd get 830 points. And so on and so forth among all the team sizes. So what we're going to do is we need a point, we need a way to get that penalty based on you know, the values in our class. And because we're working with decimals, we're going to have to return a float number. We're going to get points penalty. Just like that. Now we're returning a quick value, so lock it up. Just like that. 